I wanna go over some basic concepts in food styling that everyone can do with basic tools that you have at home or things that you can purchase really easily. I have some tools in front of me here that are gonna help you make the food that's on your plates look better, fresher, more appealing every time you take a picture. So let me introduce some of the things that we have. Now, a few of them do similar things. So I have three different types of spreaders here. And what this really is, is when we're using creamy foods or things that you can spread on breads or even something like this yogurt here. What I wanna show you first with this yogurt is it doesn't really look all that appealing like this. It's kind of lumpy and what you wanna see in food photography is sort of these beautiful whips so that the light will play against them and that it kind of has a pattern. So what I might do here is just kind of swirl and make it a little bit peaky. That makes it a little bit nicer to the eye, but also nicer to the camera. This particular spatula works with soft foods like yogurt. But if I was working with icing on a cake or a cupcake, I might need the offset spatula because it's a little more rigid and has a little bit more form to it or something even harder like cream cheese, I might need something that's a little bit stronger like this spatula. So these three spatulas sort of all have similar uses, but for different foods. Now, some of these other tools I have here are specifically about moving things around the frame. When you wanna put something specific back in a spot or you're finishing some food. So I have these bruschetta which they're not quite finished yet. So I have the bowl here and I'm gonna finish them for you right now using a couple of different tools, including these chopsticks, these tweezers, and possibly some of my eyedroppers. I still wanna place a couple of more pieces on here to kind of make it feel a little bit more. See now how that happened. It's going to happen like that sometimes and that's very natural. So let's leave it there for now. And if we don't like it, I could always remove it. This is bigger so I can grab the bigger pieces like the tomato chunks. But if I wanna be a little bit more precise, I might need to use a tweezer because this is a little bit more of a, a precision tool. So if I wanted to grab one tiny piece of basil and place it exactly where I want it, this is the tool that I wanna do that with. So I might even use two of them at the same time to sort of just place and precisely put a piece of food on the frame. What I'm trying to do is build a little bit of a variety of color for my frame. So by moving the different colored pieces around, filling the bruschetta with food, I have an opportunity to make something really beautiful. So I feel like I have almost enough. One more piece should do it. I wanna look for just the right size piece. It's almost like a little bit of surgery here. Okay, I have a really nice distribution of color, shape, texture. And now what I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit more life to it. So now I wanna introduce this. This is just an eyedropper full of olive oil. And to get that one drop in the perfect spot, I'm gonna kinda of take a little bit in. I'm gonna drip a little bit over the top to moisten it and give it a little bit more shimmer. This is gonna give it a lot more life and a lot more shine. I have that one piece laying on the cutting board. I still want a little bit more happening on the cutting board. I want it to be a little messier. So I'm gonna kind of introduce a couple of really strategic drops around my frame as if they dripped right off the edge of the bruschetta. This is really about using your eye and kind of finding a good balance between the thing that you made and the thing that you wanna photograph. I feel like I've gotten enough of that. I just wanna add one more piece to the cutting board, give it a little bit more life, and show you exactly what I mean. I know this is a lesson about styling, but I just can't resist because obviously we've created something really beautiful for camera and I wanna just go in and capture just before we move on a little bit. I feel really good about that. So let me put this aside and show you another concept. So this orange is sort of gotten a little bit dry and this happens sometimes in food photography with meats and fruits and other things where they need to be refreshed. So I have these here. One is filled with just water and one is filled with water and olive oil, sort of like salad dressing. So this would help if I hit this up here and just kind of give it a few different sprays. All of a sudden, the shimmer is back on the top of that orange. We're bringing life back to the subject.
Okay, so there's another concept I wanna show you, and it's using this other one that I called a little bit of a salad dressing before. And the reason that the oil is in there is that it's gonna create beads on any object that you spray it on. So I wanna do it on this tomato, but I wanna show you first with the camera because it's important to understand the difference, especially when getting really close. So let me get the camera up and I'm just gonna take a really close picture of this without anything. Okay, we have it. This oil, I do not wanna get on this tabletop. So just give me a second to get a plate. And this is also gonna make the picture nicer. And this takes a little bit of work. You gotta kinda of let it build up a little bit. So you're gonna keep spraying it until those beads appear. And then what happens is the oil holds the beads of water in place so that when we go back to the camera and get really close again, you can see the beauty in that. And it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I have another thing I wanna show you, and it's about using these sort of either paint brushes or pastry brushes to just selectively paint on oil or something glossy to make the food shine a little bit more. So I have some olive oil back here, which I'm gonna show you now with these olives, which have gotten a little bit dry. Now I can paint them all because I don't wanna soak this entire plate with olive oil. So I'm gonna just put a little bit on and then I'm just gonna use the paintbrush to take away the dry spots that I'm noticing without really messing up my composition too much. So there's a couple of other tools that'll always be helpful when you're in a food styling situation. Now, obviously having good sharp knives, a small paring knife is really helpful and a really excellent chef's knife. Keeping it sharp is essential because you wanna have good clean cuts when you're working with food. This little eyedropper will act just like these eyedroppers and the simplest of tools, the Q-tip, which right here gives me a perfect opportunity because I have some spill that happened on the edge of this bowl. And if I just take this and strategically remove some of the smudging and some of the things that have happened while I was styling this food, this is gonna make my composition look nicer because I have the opportunity to clean up the edge of the bowl. Something that gives you that kind of precision is gonna be excellent where you're not sticking a, a paper towel or, or a rag inside of your food to make it cleaner looking. So being able to move in a very precise way is super helpful. So I'm hoping that this is really helpful for you because it's the little things, the tiny things that turn your food photography from good to great. This video is a free preview of the iPhone Food Photography online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to start your new adventure as a food photographer. We will go over the foundations of food photography and how to use them in a variety of applications from advertising to stock photography. We will meet incredible people, and with them, we'll explore Sicilian food, traditions, and much, much more. If you'd like to learn more about food photography, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Food Photography. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So join the movement by clicking on that link right now, and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.